Good morning to you, AAS and AstroVlog fans. It is day three of AAS 235. Today's the only day of the conference that I don't have official conference duties. I've given three talks, I've chaired a session, and tomorrow we'll be running the hack day, which is always a lot of fun. So today's my easy day. Today I get to do some stuff that's really fun, and to be honest, I'm not sure how many talks I'm going to go to. Today I'm going to get to carry this camera and get to go talk to a couple of people who I look up to and really admire. I'm going to go talk to Fraser Kane and David Kipping. I have meetings with both of them. Today is about meeting. It's about meeting people one-on-one -on -one and talking about science, talking about outreach, talking about YouTube. It's going to be really fun. I hope to learn a lot. When I woke up this morning, I felt a little guilty, thinking, there's so many posters and talks I'm not going to go to today. But then I remembered that you already can't go to any appreciable fraction of the talks and posters at AAS. And the reason we bring 3,000 people together is to have these interactions. I didn't have these meetings planned before. These aren't people that I would normally meet with on a weekly basis. Instead, I have a day full of meetings with dynamic and cool people who I would normally not get to see. Even though that's not in the meeting program, that is absolutely what AAS is about. So if you find yourself missing a session, but engaged in a great conversation over lunch, don't feel guilty. You are doing AAS exactly right. Okay, I'm hanging out with Fraser Kane this morning and with the very nice uh, privilege of having somebody else hold my camera for a minute. So I have two hands for like the first time in the entire vlog. G guy could get used to that. Yeah, I know. We look pretty ridiculous carrying four <laughs> separate tripods around this conference, but you know, when you actually want to set it up and do a good interview and it's it, it, the end product looks good. Yeah. It's just hard on the back to carry all the stuff around. Yeah. When yeah. did you get started doing science communication and video particularly? Well, I've been doing, I've been running uh, Universe Today for 20 years now. Wow. And then I got into podcasting. It's got to be like 12, 13 years ago. Right. We started Astronomy Cast with Dr. Pamela Gay. Like the original iPod podcast. Yeah, like yeah. back when, like what the... <laughs> the first, like, Pamela was like right at the very early stages of, of podcasting, and, right. and then I felt I was like too late, you know, two years into it or whatever. <laughs> and then we started doing video, I think, in 2013. So wow. it feels like we've been doing about six years of video, and at this point now, I think we're we just wrapped up like episode 425 ish wow. of the Guide to Space. Done uh, more than 100 question shows. I think there's about a thousand videos on the channel. So. Yeah, it's really admirable and it's really inspirational for for the small small time beginning creators. I mean, to get to see your content and then to get to see you here and get to interact with you. So. Yeah, well, I mean, like, what what is it? You just just keep putting in the work. That's right. Right. It just yeah. day after day after day. I mean, our go job is to try to explain the stuff that's going on in these kinds of conferences, the stuff, the research that's being done to as many people as humanly possible. And as long as there is always that gap between what's being discovered and helping people understand, we've got work to do. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, that was fun. And it's really fun to see how a higher level production gets made. I need a better tripod. This, uh, this handheld thing, it's too hard on the shoulder. My good friend, Dr. Meredith Rawls, veteran of the Astro Vlog, and my uh, traveling companion the other day, who I mentioned but did not show. <laughs> I you didn't make the edit because I was sleepy and I'm, I apologize. It's all good. Um, today I'm talking to a lot of people about like science communication and outreach and I have been a fan of your science communication and outreach for a long yeah. time. And I wonder why, why did you get into it? You were also busy doing science. Why were you also spending all this time doing <laughs> science sure. outreach? Well, one, one piece of it was that in graduate school, I, it's easy to feel really isolated. You're working only with your immediate collaborators, with a couple other people who are experts in your subfield. And I was in a more remote geographical location too, in New Mexico. I couldn't like go to a big city very easily and or go to conferences as cheaply either. 
and social media, especially Twitter at the time, was a really cool way to connect with people who were dealing with similar struggles um, and also scientifically doing things that were relevant. Um, so that was kind of the motivation. And then I just was like, well, this seems to be working, so I'll keep doing it. Yeah, it's, it's an opportunity that has such a low barrier to entry right. and such a big payoff. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, some people do have issues with like harassment and stuff, and that's very yeah. legitimate. And I want to acknowledge that. Um, yeah. But but I have been really lucky and have mostly enjoyed the positive aspects of it. Hi there. Mike here. I am a PhD student from the University of Victoria, attending WS meeting here in Honolulu. As you see from this beautiful rainbow stripe, I, this is my first time attending. I studied star formation, and so what I look at how exactly do the gas inside this cold nebula comes together and eventually collapses to form into stars we see in the night sky. In terms of my vision for science communication outreach, is that. I had a really ex good experience enjoying science and realized there's a lot of joy being able to see the universe firsthand. And so a lot of what I want to do is bring that joy to the audiences. And so one thing I hope to launch hopefully within the upcoming year is to do a podcast, one to basically share this excitement, but also to showcase the life of different scientists in that these are humans, these are people you can relate to. And these are potentially people who you can become and you can get to experience explore the universe yourself. We're good. All right, finally on the vlog. You made it, you <laughs> yeah. made it. Here we are. My guest today, of course, Professor David Kipping, who has the incredible YouTube channel Cool Worlds. If you are watching this and you are not subscribed, um, then you clicked the wrong video on YouTube. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. I'm, kind of in, I'm kind of intrigued what your plans for the, for the channel are. I What's, where's this whole yeah. experiment, which is, it's really original, right? I don't think people realize that there aren't too many channels which really vlog an astronomer's perspective yeah. day to day. I think it's at an inflection point, to be honest. I spent a minute thinking it was really good outreach, or maybe I'm just not charismatic enough. I mean, I, the target I, audience is, is yeah. too niche. I was sad for a little while about that, but I yeah. think I'm actually okay with it, because it's really, it seems to be really effective in reach. We, we started off always think about science. Yeah. And uh, the original videos, as some of my viewers will remember, were, were shorter. We yeah. did like four or five minutes because I thought that's what YouTube wanted. Yeah. And it makes it really hard. It makes it really hard to talk about a research paper in four, I mean, people are doing this. This, this, this is literally what the week is full yeah. of. You're really trying to put yourself in the mindset of another civilization which has nothing to do with our civilization. Yeah. What are all the possible ways which something could look non-natural, and it's it's an endless list, and yet yeah. there's so few of us uh, yeah. thinking about it that it's. It, we're, I really appreciate your point that we, there's a desperate need in a way for um, astronomers to invest some small fraction of their time. If yeah. everybody did that, we'd probably have some some really unique ideas coming to the fore of this. This has been an awesome, easy day at AAS. The first couple of days were so packed, giving talks, chairing sessions. Today. I just got to go to a couple talks that I wanted to be at, and I got to talk to some incredibly interesting people. Through total luck, I had a bunch of meetings with people that I was really excited about that all came together on one day. It especially means a lot to have people like uh, David and Fraser on my show. These are people who that I've looked up to for a long time in science communication, and to get to feature them today on my astro vlog, thank you guys. But I think actually, sincerely, the bigger thanks needs to go to undergrads and the young grad students and the first time attendees to the AAS meeting who have let me put my camera in front of them, in front of their posters. And because it gives me a reason to go talk to new people, to go down the poster hall and talk to new people. And more generally, I hope they also put a more human and a more broad face on what astronomy is. One of the pieces about this channel that I'm always conflicted about is because it's sort of the gym show, that might suggest that this is somehow the model of how you should be or what a scientist looks like. Yes, this is what a scientist looks like, but this is not what all scientists look like. For example, go check out the amazing Twitter thread and all the quote tweets recently by Serafina Nance about what a scientist looks like. So thank you to everyone who has watched this channel, especially thank you to everyone who has been willing to contribute, let me put my camera in front of them, and have given me a small bit of their time and their story. Tomorrow's the last main day of the conference, and that means it is time for the AAS Hack Together Day. I'll be running that show tomorrow. 
I'll bring the camera along. I can't wait to see what all the amazing projects people start are. See you bright and early.